This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. everybody to a decidedly soggy Alton Park circuit for the second visit of the year for the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Now last time we raced here a month or so ago we had two fantastic races but in completely different conditions a bone dry circuit so today's two races could provide us with a slightly different look at the front of the field. The championship has been as close as ever in 2020. Six races down, five of those races decided by less than a second in class one We've had four different winners in classes one and two already this year. With these mixed conditions today, there's every chance that we could add to that list. It's going to be a fascinating day of racing. Coming into this meeting, the championship standings look like this. Simon Clark with a five-point lead over Mark McAleer. Podium Pete Morris in third from James Cayley. Chris Dyer in fifth and Jake McAleer in sixth position. Class two headed by Matt Kyle Henney from James Coleman. Just two points separating those. Charles Clark and Bill Cayley third and fourth in class three. Paul Simpson heads the standings from Mike Thompson and Alistair Nelson. Uh, Pete Morris, welcome to uh, Alton Park. Third place in the championship arriving here, but, and I was shocked to hear this this morning, no race wins yet this year. What's going on? It's quite annoying me, really. I said to the wife today, I said, Look, I've, got, I've got four races left here and, here and uh, Donington, so I need to get back on the first place podium. So we came here testing yesterday, hoping it was going to rain, we knew it was, but it didn't rain yesterday. So what we had is dry settings again. So we had a bit of a stab at the setting today. Of course, he's thrown it down Alton Park. So uh, I was quite happy with the first race, second on the grid, second race pole. It's definitely top three. Well, well if I can convert it to a first place, I'll be well happy. Well, Paul Simpson, you arrive here at Alton Park as the comfortable Class Three leader, and potentially, we reckon, you could wrap the title up today. How are you feeling? Yeah, a bit nervous. Obviously, it's a wet one out there. Oh, same conditions for everyone. So, you know, um, we'll see how it goes. P2 at the moment, so race wins would be nice, but just finish the, finish the race is better. Well, uh, James Cayley, welcome to a, a slightly soggy Alton Park, the, uh, the fourth round of the season. It's been a decent year for you so far. You're fourth in the points with a win way back at Snetterton at the start of the year. Brands Hatch last time out, though, it uh, didn't quite go to plan, did it? No, not quite. I had two uh, P7s in, in both races in class. Um, so we qualified fifth and fourth, uh, and just sadly had a couple of had an incident on the second corner at Druids in the first race. In the second race, driver error, run out of talent, whatever you like to call it. I guess the good news is that you can at least count Brands Hatch as your two drop scores, so this weekend at Alton Park is a chance maybe to, to bounce back? Yeah, hopefully so, hopefully so. Um, I've only ever had one race before, which was Snetterton last year, which um, I really enjoyed. Um, but saying that, this morning quality wasn't quite so good, so, uh, so anything can happen in a wet race, anything can happen in any race, so we'll just have to see how we're getting on, um, starting P6, and um, see, see where we get to. So the first race of the day is about to get away. The car's heading out onto the circuit now in very similar conditions to those they faced in qualifying. It's still very wet and treacherous out on circuit. It's Simon Clark and Pete Morris on the front row together. Clark was a winner here earlier in the year, whilst Pete Morris is desperate to get his first W of 2020. Keep an eye on that Class 3 championship battle as well that could be decided today. Richard, over to you. Andy, thanks very much very wet conditions. Porsches, Alton and wet, not the ideal conditions for motor racing, but these brave boys are out there and are going to deliver the goods. Simon Clark starting on pole position from Pete Morris. Jake McAleer back in the Cayman is third from his dad, Mark McAleer. Class two headed by James Coleman from Charles Clark. Matt Carl Henney, the championship leader, and Ross Morris. Class three 
is headed by Sam Beckett from Paul Simpson with Mike Thompson third in class and Stephen Shaw completing the top four. The lights are on both on the gantry and on the cars and away we go. It looks like a good start by Pete Morris from the outside and Pete is gunning for it but so too very quickly off the line. He's Mark McAleer on the outside line. So McAleer in the black and blue 997. Great starts by both of the 997s off the front. This is how difficult conditions are. Bill Cayley's view, not the best. And remember, everybody bar the front driver has got that view as Mark McAleer starts to, well, now ch try and chase Pete Morris, who's got away. Morris has got a good lead at the moment. It was a valiant effort from Mark McAleer from the outside of row two. And it has netted him second place as they come up to the Shell Oils hairpin for the first time. James Coleman passes Charles Clark. James Coleman in a strong position champion. Two, two points behind Matt Kyle Henny. Remember that there is a single dropped score. A couple of drivers have, more than a couple of drivers in fact, have had retirement. So they'll be counting every single point. But some drivers, such as Mike Thompson, in class three, Bill Cayley in class two and indeed Simon Clark, the championship leader, have all finished every race they've started so far. And we've had six races thus far. Snethers and Park, as you heard from Andy earlier in the season, that was in July and Brands Hatch, where we were part of the wonderful Porsche Festival. Good to see Jake McAleer back in the Cayman. The blue car there was racing the 996 last time out at Brands having switched over from the Cayman but has gone back into it now and will be keen to impress in that car this weekend so it's a good start you've got to say at all part that overtaking is usually a premium in these conditions even more so Morris leading from Mark McAleer then Simon Clark in the 23 Jake McAleer next up there is Chris Dyer. Chris already had one retirement to his name. That was Snedson Race 2 this year. Hasn't had a podium yet, which is unusual for Chris Dyer. And there's the reigning champion, Ross Morris, running well. Ross up ahead of Paul Simpson. So Ross coming under a bit of pressure had that knock at Brands Hatch in the first race. So Ross not only has a non-finish to drop, but also a non-start in Race 2 at Brands Hatch. And Ross being passed by Paul Simpson in the 88 car. Simpson with four class wins so far. His drop score will only be a fourth place in class from Alton Park race two. And he's keen to, I guess, put uh, Alton Park aside as a potential bogey circuit. And he's looking good at the moment. Class three car up ahead of the class two machine. So Ross Morris keeps betting himself and, and the repaired car back into the swing of things. Conditions, fair to say, absolutely horrible out there on track. We take our hat off as ever to the marshals and officials who are braving the weather for us to have our racing. We, we can't come and watch as spectators, but of course we can enjoy the coverage. So coming down into his lops, Pete Morris. Well, he sounded determined on that interview with Andy but he's under pressure from his long-time rival, Mark McAleer, at the moment. So it's Pete Morris, both of these guys former champions. Morris, the reigning Class 1 champion. Head up Clay Hill. Mark McAleer just trying to work out where he'll be able to, A, get the run on Pete, and then work out whether there's more standing water off the racing line, which there probably isn't at the moment. So there is the chance with these wet conditions that there'll be a little bit more grip off the racing line where the gaps in the tarmac don't get filled up with rubber there's the reigning overall champion Ross Morris the Strasser livery cars obviously very prominent throughout the field the black and red livery as we watch Simon Clark the championship leader starting now to try and close in on Mark McAleer there's Matt Kyle Henney class two leader by two points over James Coleman James has had a brace of retirements Brands Hatch race two when he was leading I think Alton Park when he was leading as well, race two. So looking to try and get back on the top step of the podium. Sam Beckett busy closing up in the class three 
2021 car on Ross Morris. Paul Simpson having managed to, to pull away a little bit from those two. So Sam Beckett is running second in class at the moment. Mike Thompson third in class in the number six car. Stephen Crimes, good to see him back. We saw him at Alton Park last time out, so had a non-finish running in class three. Fourth position for him in this one at the moment. Relative newcomer to the championship, enjoying his outing here at Alton Park. Back with the lead top three. And it's still Pete Morris out front. But Mark McAleer still with him. The top three, as indeed they were at Brands Hatch, circulating together. We don't have Kevin Harrison in the mix this weekend. Kevin's uh, plan was never to do more than a, a couple of races and it was his home circuit brands where he saw the win it would have been lovely to see Kevin joining this trio and indeed look, let's not forget Jake McAleer because the blue came and he's not that far behind neither is Chris Dyer well, these three are, these three drivers might not be having a cut and thrust race but it is very much cat and mouse just to try and work out where there is the opportunity to close in where perhaps there is an opportunity to pass to join James Cayley the results James was referring to, Brian Hatch, he, either of those you could take as his drop score, but won, won the first race of the season at Snet, did James. So running well. You can see Ross Morris not losing too much ground at the moment on Paul Simpson. Sam Beckett going through, sharing the car this year with Alistair Nelson. If you've seen that car before and thinking, hang on, it wasn't Sam when I saw it previously. James Coleman being chased by Charles Clark. Clark chased with the 77 car. Now we were making the, the sequential results theory at Brands Hatch because Charles had a third and a second at Brands and said that logically next up was going to be a win, a 3-2-1. But he's running in P2 here at the moment behind the class leader James Coleman and, and doing a very good job as Sam Beckett gets closer and closer to Ross Morris. And Matt Kyle Henney is off, the class championship leader, Matt Kyle Henney off and in the gravel. So Matt Kyle Henney, the only retirement of the race so far here at Alton Park, round seven of the championship and it's Pete Morris out front. This is a good sight. We haven't seen Pete up at the sharp end, as he explained in the interview with Andy at the start of the programme. But very clearly, the multi-champion still has the pace and, and the car as well to do the job. This is the battle between Sam Beckett, second in Class 3, chasing down reigning champion Ross Morris in his Class 2 Boxster. Ross's first race back since the damage at Brands Hatch on the 6th of September. And he'll be just trying to collect a few points he effectively has two drop scores there's only one drop scored allowed in the championship nine of the ten races if you complete all ten will count towards your championship tally back to the front still this well it's four cars now for the lead they're not all particularly close together but in these conditions that is a four car dice for lead position back again to Sam Beckett Second meeting on the bounce for Sam. Uh, just the one finish under his belt at Brands Hatch. So the lead class three car, just a little way ahead there. That's the silver grey 88 boxer of Paul Simpson. And now we've got six cars effectively in the lead group. This is amazing stuff. And at the back of the group, it's James Cayley. Ahead of James is Chris Dyer. And then Jake McAleer in blue, on board with James Cayley. Look how difficult conditions are. It's very easy for us to sit and watch the race from outfield. But in car, so much spray. It is a very, very wet day in Cheshire here. And these drivers, I've got to say, are doing an absolutely superb job of it at the moment. Plenty of standing water on the inside. Mark McAleer's having a look. This is brave stuff from McAleer. Goes through and takes the lead. Mark McAleer, an audacious move on Pete Morris. And McAleer gets in front. He very nearly got around the outside on the first corner of the opening lap. And now Pete Morris is going to have a fight back. There was a little touch you saw between the two cars. So Pete Morris 
He's now coming under pressure from Simon Clark for second position. Here is the leader in class two on board with Charles Clark. Second place. This will be three podia on the bounce for Charles Clark. If he stays where he is, he's challenging James Coleman. And James Coleman clearly not having things all his own way today here at Alton Park. He's got his mirrors full of and this is great this is typical of the championship Coleman runs a little bit wide will lose momentum and Charles Clark seizes the opportunity goes through as they come down cascades Charles Clark's got the lead James Coleman ran a little bit wide I'm wondering if Pete Morris maybe slid a bit wide and lost momentum as well but Mark McAleer still there Simon Clark now up into second Pete Morris is in third place there is Mike Thompson So, uh, Mike, at the moment, running in third position in class, in the Class 3 Boxsters. So, it's Mark McAleer, the two championship front runners at the moment, first and second. Pete Morris has dropped back a little bit into the clutches of Jake McAleer. Chris Dyer next up, then James Cayley. Remember, James won the opening race of the year. We've got so many superb drivers that can win. There's Paul Seagrave. Great to see Paul Seagrave out with us again as well, running in the 996 Class 1 box. To welcome back Paul. Neglected to mention Paul Seagrave, but super to see him on track and back with us. Would have been nice to welcome him back with a bit of sunshine. So Charles Clark leading Class 2. There is James Coleman running in second place. Coleman won't be panicked at all because he either finishes first or second in class. He's had two second place uh, two second place finishes, two retirements, but all of the other races have been wins. And he does need to finish each race now because of the two retirements. Can't afford to drop any more points as Jake McAleer starts to try and close in on Pete Morris. Pete's still on for a podium position. Again, the view from Bill Cayley, which slightly off, off where the wipers are working, but you can it is so difficult to see. Look at the rain falling down in the standing water. It is not abating at all. And Charles Clark, what a superb thing it was to interview him after his maiden career podium at Brands Hatch in September. And off goes James Coleman. A half spin. Now, how far ahead is James Coleman from the rest of the chasers in class two that's how hard he was trying you might think of it as a mistake but James Coleman was trying to get back into lead position as we watch Sam Beckett still all over the back of Ross Morris Ross of course wants to bring the car home this is a circumspect drive from Ross to try and get the car home Richard Baston up ahead of Mike Thompson Richard Baston running in 13th place at the moment Julian Morris in the mix as well the class 2 boxster the golf livery which we saw in the resto racing series last year so Pete Morris now has been passed by Jake McAleer Jake McAleer up on the podium Pete Morris is still there in fourth Chris Dyer is immediately in behind him again a reminder of how bad the conditions are here at all but even where the wipers are working you can see there the, the view is, is smudged and smeared so it is difficult for everybody the fact that we've had overtakes is, is superb Steve Crimes there in the 43 car second meeting of the season looking for his second race finish of the year as well and running in fourth position in class three steady stuff from James Cayley at the moment and be about to make a move here and a little bit of contact uh, on, on the number 11 car. James Cayley, I beg your pardon, with Chris Dyer and into pit wall. That is such, such a shame to see. Here is Charles Clark, the Class 2 leader. So Chris Dyer uh, will join Matt Kyle Henney into retirement. We're with James Coleman, second position, has recovered for second position in Class 2. Those two had a good lead. We've got waved yellows there for Chris Dyer's car. Very, very sadly. Chris, the former champion, very sadly in the pit wall. Not what we want to see. A safety car will come onto track because of that. Rightly so. Smart, quick decision from the race organisers here. 
And it is Mark McAleer who leads from Simon Clark. Now, how quickly that will be moved, I don't know. As we pick up on Paul Simpson leading class three. This is Deer Leap. James Coleman going through. It's going to take a while for that, for that car to get moved because it depends where the rescue vehicle comes from. But it could be a big clear-up job and it's going to depend how movable the car is. So Mark McAleer here is going to pull back, I think, a few points from Simon Clark if things stay like this. Safety car picks them up and it is Mark McAleer from Simon Clark, Jake McAleer third, Pete Morris is in fourth place, then Paul Seagrave, Paul's actually a lap down, which uh, is is uh, understandable given the conditions that we had in the first part of the race, uh, but he's running six in class, so some points on Paul Seagrave's return to the championship, he's in the 45 car. See how dark it is as well. Cloud cover is thick, loads of rain on track. And Mark McAleer here looking for a hat-trick of wins this season. We've had a truncated campaign. We're at Donington Park first weekend in November for our final round of this year's championship, fifth and final event. And it's going to be a checkered flag under safety car for Mark McAleer. McAleer wins. Simon Clark second from Jake McAleer. Pete Morris just off the podium, but with a fourth-place finish. And... Class two, therefore, will go to Charles Clark. James Coleman, I think, would, would have been hoping for a resumption of racing to have a nibble at Charles Clark. But Charles Clark does get 3 2 1 on the race result order. Third podium on the bounce for him, and it's a win in class two. Class three is won by Paul Simpson, who finishes eighth overall. Here is the official result McAleer, Clark, McAleer, Morris, Charles Clark, James Coleman, second in class two, Clark winning class two, Bill Cayley next for Paul Simpson, Ross Morris. Sam Beckett, fastest lap, Mark McAleer. Julian Morris, 11th from Richard Baston, Mike Thompson, Paul Seagrave and Stephen Crimes. Mark, well done. A third victory of 2020 and a, a really important one, that for the points. So, absolutely over the moon with that. Third, Pete was pretty good out of Druids, which is, I knew I was better on the brakes than him into the last corner, um, but I couldn't get close enough because he was, he was doing a good job out of Druids. Uh, and then he just managed to get it sideways, just slightly coming out, out of there. And uh, I just managed to snip a bit of an opportunity and he left me a bit of a gap on the inside, so obviously we took it. Well, Simon, congratulations. Second place in Class 1. Uh, a job just to survive those conditions though, really, isn't it? Yeah, mixed mixed emotions, really, because on the one hand, I'm, I'm sort of uh, frustrated that I didn't take a win and that Mark actually, you know, got, managed to get some additional points um, but on the other hand I kind of feel fairly comfortable that we finished the race we got, you know it was a good result nonetheless but yeah it's challenging conditions. Well Jake uh, welcome back to the podium it's been a bit of a while hasn't it a, a trying season so far so that must, must make this all the sweeter. Yeah well we always knew coming into the season to be a bit of a learning curve moving over to the Hartek uh, Hartek came in there but we knew that from the start we, we've stuck at it and the boys have really gone away and done a fantastic job for me and uh, the car this weekend has been phenomenal and uh, yeah, it's just down to me to get it a little bit higher because Hard Tech have done a great job. Charles Clark, huge congratulations. Your first ever victory in the championship. That was not the drive of someone in their debut season of racing though. Well done. Thank you very much. It's quite difficult in those wet conditions, especially for the first time. James isn't an easy man to overtake, but you managed it. Talk us through the move. Yeah, I kind of had to wait for his mistake because uh, I didn't want to crash basically. So I waited from a stake into turn one and then went up the inside where actually there was more grip than I thought. And then I got the run down into turn two. So I just had to hang on from there really. James Coleman, second in class two here at Alton Park. Uh, it could so easily have been the win though, couldn't it? It could have been not finishing. It was quite <laughs> bad out there. Um, no, Charles fought a really good race. He was very clean. He had a bit more out the, out the corners than I did, and more on the straights. He came alongside me on every straight bit, and even in front of me. Um, so, no, he, he thoroughly deserved that win, so fair play to him. That's his first win, so no, he's done really well today. Well, uh, Bill, congratulations. For someone in their first full season of racing, two podiums at this stage ain't bad, is it? 
No, no, I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. I'd say, especially because today is the first day I've really used wets as well. So, uh, as yeah, the conditions aren't the best. It definitely got a bit, well, got really bad. No, I mean, it's a pretty challenging circuit as it is, and when there's puddles everywhere and you're sort of like, the braking's not the bit that's sending you sideways, it's just hitting those puddles and everything. And uh, yeah, no, that's uh, pretty challenging to be fair, yeah. Yeah, yeah, second and third last time we were here, so it's really good to actually get a win in here. Really, really happy with my drive. I think I did, you know, exceptionally well under the conditions. It was really tough out there with the, the rain coming down. So yeah, really exciting, yeah. Some of the Class 2 drivers were shocked at how fast some of you leading Class 3 drivers were out there. Do you think you have an edge in these conditions? Yeah, I think obviously with less power, maybe if you get on the throttle a bit too quickly in a, a higher class car, the, the back end might go around a bit. So certainly these are these boxers are really nimble around the corners so uh, you can carry your speed through. So yeah, the drive, uh, they're really happy with the drive. They're really good cars. Well, uh, Sam, great to have you back in the championship this weekend. You raced with us at uh, Brands Hatch last time out, and here you are, second step in the podium. Not bad start to the day. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I was hoping for P1, but um, yeah, we just didn't have a, the, the pace off the start and then got held up with a Class 2 car, so it's one of the things, but um, hoping for that P1 in the second race. Well, uh, Mike, uh, back on the podium again in Class 3, a solid third place, and uh, I suppose you're just glad to get to the end in some ways. Yeah, pretty much. It's very, very wet out there. A lot of standing water and I'm just glad to have actually finished. <laughs> Had a couple of scary moments, a couple of slides and a few bits of standing water. But just uh, jolted the car around, but uh, managed to bring it back and I'm glad it's all in one piece. <laughs> Well, Matt Carl Henny, championship leader, arriving here at Dalton Park in Class 2. Race 1 did not go to plan. Uh, what happened? Um, so we had a real issue with fog on the inside of the windscreen. Um, all both green flag laps, it was OK. So I didn't come in. Um, and then I sat on the grid, and it just completely fogged up around me. I couldn't see anything. Uh, got a really good start, <laughs> annoyingly. And I was leading it through the first corner, but it was just going to be too dangerous with everyone around me. So I pulled on off to the side and came in. They gave it a quick wipe down and I went back out again, um, same issue, tried to drive back around the circuit again to come in but I went off unfortunately, uh, just because I couldn't see <laughs> Well, the conditions have not improved at all ahead of race number two here at Alton Park. The rain has persisted, and if anything, the conditions out on circuit are even more treacherous. Nonetheless, the field are heading out onto the grid ahead of their second race here today. A safety car start for this one, but it will be Pete Morris that leads the field away at the start of the race. Remember, he led in the early stages in race one, while Simon Clark and Mark McAleer are virtually together on points, with now only three races to go. Richard, this could be a really important race in the championship story. Absolutely spot on, Andy. What a great decision to start behind the safety car. It's going to, I think, save a lot of problems at Turn 1. It's Pete Morris on pole, Simon Clark following him from Jacob Mark McAleer, Chris Dyer and Glenn Broster completing the top six. Class 2 headed by James Coleman from Matt Carl Henney, Charles Clark and Julian Morris. Class 3, pole position Sam Beckett from... Paul Simpson, Mike Thompson and Stephen Shaw. So the safety car start is underway and it's Pete Morris who leads them down into Old Hall Corner from Simon Clark. Jake McAleer, Mark McAleer is in fourth position. A very wild moment there for Matt Kyle Henney. Erst World Championship leader, that's why we started them in single file. And the momentum lost is a bonus for Charles Clark, who smoothly goes through. Charles Clark through into second position in class. Great move from him. Class two cars coming down the hill. Richard Baston in the 944, up ahead of Ross Morris. Ross looking a, to have a, a little bit more of a sure footing in this one, which is good to see. Remember, many of these youngsters won't have had too much experience of racing in the wet, let alone racing in the wet here at Alton Park. As Richard Baston looks to try and make up the position, you can see the rain not only affecting the driver's windscreens, but also our cameras as well. 2.69 miles Alton Park International Circuit. Through the chicane goes Charles Clark. 
And a good race between himself and James Coleman in race number one. It was a pity we didn't restart. I think we would have had a fight to the flag between those two in class two. As indeed we have in the point situation now. And I'll come to that when I get the, when I get a moment to in class two and class one. There is Mark McAleer. Mark very close to Simon Clark in the championship standings. And he'll want to try and get ahead of Simon here for sure. It's Pete Morris in the lead, the red and black Strasser livery from Simon Clark second. There is James Cayley running well too. Here is a, a view from uh, James on board. James non-finisher along with Chris Dyer sadly in the first race of the day. And the Hartek Cayman looking pretty good. We've got a, a Cayman 2-3 here at the moment with Ross Morris, uh, sorry Pete Morris out front in the 997. Pete was the first driver to win in the 997. If I have to dig the records out and have a look. 37 career wins in the Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. As Richard Baston goes to the inside line of the golf livery of Julian Morris. So the boxster, the Class 2 boxster, running Class 3 last year, is passed. Ross Morris coming under a bit of pressure as well. Just look at the rain on the standing water. It is indeed, as Andy called it, worse. But how closely these cars are running testament to good driving now Julian Morris about to be passed by the defending champion Morris goes through on the inside line lovely two good clean moves one from Richard Baston one from Ross Morris so great driving and uh, you know careful passing that's exactly what we want to see as we watch Mark McAleer still in fourth position the race leaders coming out of the shell oils helping hairpin Simon Clark trying to hunt down Pete Morris at the moment James Cayley in fifth gap developing after fifth place race one we saw six cars pretty much all together for the lead by the halfway stage and James Cayley at the moment is the man in fifth and a gap back from that lead group here comes Cayley and passes Mark McAleer so James Cayley, Mark McAleer is dropping back and I think has got a problem because James Cayley goes into fourth and Mark McAleer. Now, I need to do some sums here because it was very close championship-wise. Mark McAleer, that's going to be, without a doubt, Mark McAleer hasn't finished lower than third and he's down to fifth place now as we watch the two battlers at the head of class two. These, these two drivers by my math separated now by two points but Charles Clark has to drop scores so James Coleman with two retirements is in slightly the better position points wise out of the two great work from Paul Simpson again Paul up ahead of Bill Cayley you can see the 21 car of Alistair Nelson the red car is the second place in class three and Mike Thompson running in third position at the moment in class. Richard Baston having a, a good run. Now once again in class two. So back down towards us again. The run from Druids into Lodge Corner. A battle on for the lead here. We've got the two leading class three cars very close together Simpson seems Paul Simpson in the 8-8 seems to have just that little bit of edge and is going to pass Julian Morris he's looking on the inside line and goes through that's a good buffer for him over the second place car of Sam Beckett at the moment so all good for him again a look from within Mike Thompson's car and just see how smooth the drivers have to be Through comes Sam Beckett going through, makes makes it past Julian Morris. Uh, he'll try and hunt down Paul Simpson now. Again, the view from Bill Cayley's uh, car. And Bill passed, so again, another of the youngsters here getting a second career podium. Had one in race two at Brands Hatch, which was super to see. Had a good weekend at Brands Hatch. The weather was much more agreeable than it is here this weekend. So first, second and third in shot. It's Pete Morris out front from Simon Clark. Jake McAleer 
is in third. Are we going to see the Caymans overcoming the 997s in this one? Mike Thompson looks to the inside line here. I said they're giving each other room, but this is a close race. And Julian Norris in the Class 2 car manages to see off the challenge from the Class 3 car of Mike Thompson for the moment. So we've got Paul Simpson out front just going out of shot. Then Sam Beckett. Mike Thompson dicing with Bill Cayley. So this is a, a Class 3 car looking to try and get involved in two Class 2s. So still on for a potential podium is Mike Thompson. And we'll see whether he can manage to get past those cars and maybe have a nibble at Sam Beckett for second position in class. And then maybe in turn Paul Simpson, who is the class leader. Here comes Beckett towards us. Julian Morris next up. Bill Cayley still being chased by Mike Thompson. Mike having finished all of his races on the podium so far this year. Bill Cayley, the man that he's chasing. Bill, in turn, looking to try and catch up with Julian Morris in the number 10. So, Bill closes up. Through Deer Leap they go. A little bit of spray, a lot of spray being kicked up into... Bill Cayley as they go past again tick off another lap here so Clark and McAleer by my reckoning one point and Bill Cayley has a half spin in the number 12 I tell you what he held that well manages to keep it going he's not going to lose too much loses a bit of ground but not overly much as Pete Morris the race leader comes down towards us Jake McAleer is challenging Simon Clark for Second place here at Alton Park. This is round eight of the championship. Pete Morris the leader. Simon Clark second. Jake McAleer hounding him currently in third. So who really would want to be a racing driver when you've got conditions like this and lovely machinery to risk around what is arguably one of the finest race circuits in the UK, the Alton Park International Circuit. Just over two and a half miles of wonderful racetrack, but there are better conditions you can race in. We're watching Julian Morris still up ahead of Mike Thompson. Bill Cayley busy chasing him. So we've got the Class 3 car in a Class 2 sandwich here at the moment. Thompson, of course, trying to chase Paul Simpson for the uh, oh, the championship points at the moment Alistair Nelson Sam Beckett sharing the 21 car and this is the fight for the overall lead and it's Pete Morris who is in lead position having got pole and that's great to see they're coming up on Stephen Crimes who pulls to the outside of the track to allow the faster class one cars through super stuff from Stephen allows them through cleanly so it's Pete Morris from Simon Clark Simon here uh, does have to drop the score so if he if he did suffer a retirement here I know he wouldn't want to because you don't want the mechanical malady or, any, or the trauma or anything else but points wise drop score wise it's not going to hurt him too much here, here goes Charles Clark battling hard for class two and still chasing James Coleman and that was a super onboard shot just showing you when you get close to the car in front how much spray there is. We haven't seen too many of the drivers exploring the outside line. And perhaps the, the answer to my question there is the marbles that you can see, the tyre detritus on the outside of the corners, which is not really going to make that line, if we want to call it a line, viable in these wet conditions. Matt Carl Henry recovered from that first turn sideways moment. Richard based and trying to hunt down on him in the class two nine four four. Here comes Matt Kyle Henney, championship leader coming to this round and it has gone one way and then the other class too and all of a sudden we've got Charles Clark in the mix for the points as well. I think Matt on 169 points now, so 20 points down on James Coleman. Coleman with nothing to drop, Charles Clark on 187 by my maths with one score to drop and then Matt Kyle Henney on 69 who won't drop any but obviously could come back into the picture with a good finish in this one and two good finishes at oh a sideways moment there from Bill Cayley who we saw 
have a, uh, a good recovery earlier on. Still this Class 2 battle continues to entertain us. Charles Clark here is really, you've got to say, in the worst possible position here. Just getting spray thrown up at him. And James Coleman doing a wonderful job out front leading this one. So I doff my cap to both of these drivers, giving us a fine race. It's Pete Morris in the number two car. Runner up in the championship last year, hence the number two, but class winner of class one, multi champion in Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli Racing. James Cayley. Well, James on for another good result here in the number 11 car. Took fourth position, a winner round one of Snetson, as I've mentioned several times. It was fourth in race two, Snetterton by far and away his best meeting of the season but showing extremely well and strongly in wet conditions briefly with Alistair Nelson and then Richard Baston who is now ahead, Richard Baston ahead of Matt Kyle Henney so Richard on for a podium in class one, our class three leader again is Paul uh, Paul Simpson, I think that will make it four wins on the on the bounce for Paul Simpson in class, if he can hold on to it. Matt Kyle Henley, though, the Sasanti car closing up on the 944 again. So, Matt by no means settling for anything in this race. There is Bill Cayley, still running in sixth position in class two. Julian Morris still up ahead at the moment of Mike Thompson. Remember, class two car leading class three, a class... Two car ahead of them as well. So back with Pete Morris, who is controlling this race well. Simon Clark gets close, but not close enough to be able to make the move. Pete Morris led the first race. He might have that mistake that, or that moment that cost him race number one in the back of his mind. And that will just, to a driver like Pete Morris, who's got so much experience, will focus him as much as, if not more, than the wet conditions that we've got here. So Morris doing a super job out front, as ever he does, looking for career win 38, and it's 1.6 miles, uh, sorry, 2.6 miles away now for Pete Morris. A little bit of club history as well for Simon Clark, who is looking for a 10th podium, beg your pardon, 20th podium. 10 comes into my head because of James Coleman. He's looking for a 10th class win in the championship. And he is still out front, but is under big pressure from Charles Clark, who still remains close. And James Coleman, bear in mind that, that Clark has done a super job racing very, very close to James Coleman all the way through this race. But Coleman similarly has had that car in his mirrors and has soaked up a lot of psychological pressure here. Across the line, they go onto their last lap. So we've had a good race at the front, a good race here for the class two drivers. Simon Clark now, if anything on this last lap, is getting closer. Richard Baston is still there. Matt Kyle Henny is still there as well. There is leader of Class 3. Paul Simpson punching above his weight here, very definitely. The Class 3 cars intermingling with the Class 2. Sam Beckett still in second place in class in the classic red livery. And not that far away here Sam Beckett has not lost touch with the class leader I don't think we're going to see a battle on the last lap because of the gap that there is between them this though is first and second overall and Pete Morris here sees nerve-wracking for us it's going to be nerve-wracking as well for Simon Clark who is challenging for the overall lead but Pete Morris I think has got this under control hasn't actually finished higher than third all year when I look at the stats which is absolutely amazing but Pete Morris it is that comes out of Druids, no traffic in front of him, clear but wet circuit, and the Strasse number two car comes into Lodge Corner, conservative line there, doesn't want to allow, I'll tell you what, Simon Clark wouldn't do anything like a lunge up the inside, and he's going to take P2, but it's the first win of the season for reigning Class 1 champion, Pete Morris takes the win from Simon Clark. Third position, both of the McAleers sadly have retired.
Jake and Mark McAleer out of the race. Third position, therefore, is going to be James Cayley. A second podium of the year for James Cayley. Cut splashes his way across the line and finishes in third place. This is the battle for fourth and for the Class 2 lead. And it's James Coleman out front. Charles Clark in second. Coleman is going to re-establish himself here at the head of Class 2. But Charles Clark, a fine second position, all side by side to the line. And it was Coleman that just took it from Clark. Pete Morris from Simon Clark and James Cayley. James Coleman winning Class 2 from Charles Clark and Richard Baston. Matt Carl heading next. Paul Simpson wins Class 3. Ross Morris was ninth from Sam Beckett. The finish is completed by Julian Morris, Mike Thompson, Bill Cayley and Stephen Cribes. Well, Pete, we said at the start of the day you were hoping you'd get that first win of the season. And you have. Easy as that. I knew I could. I know the car was in it and myself, but the first race, like I said, steamed up, I lost my apexes, Mark got past me. But we, I just got my head down on that one and just controlled the race. I mean, I know where Clark was quicker than me. And it's, it was, I, I, I could pull like four car legs in the first UK. Cat and mouse in the end, but uh, I was glad to see the chequered flag, but i have got my name for number one. <laughs> so, <laughs> wasn't gonna go, it was going to be hero or zero, so. <laughs> well, uh, Simon, I saw you get out of your car now and there was a big sigh of relief. You're glad to be at the end of that one, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. I love racing and I love racing in the wet, but I think with that amount of standing water, it's just not fun. It's just uh, trying to, yeah, just trying to keep out of trouble really was the name of the game today. And we managed it, thankfully. That's a, a nice way to turn things around from this morning. You've got to be pleased. Yeah, really pleased actually. So it's not in P8. Didn't have the best. Took my second qualifying lap wasn't the fastest. Um, sadly, there was a couple of guys missing who were meant to be in front of us. So we sort of had a, ended up expectedly starting P6. Um, just wanted to keep it on the black stuff, make sure we get round, make sure we finish. I just made sure I stayed in front of the guys behind, kept up kind of with the guys in front and ended up with P3, so really happy with that. Well, uh, James Coleman, you weren't quite able to win Class 2 in Race 1, but you've made up for that in Race 2. Another close fight though, wasn't it? Yeah, no, Charles kept us honest right the way through the race. Um, it's quite relaxing out there, really, because I could see where I could clearly see where he is faster. So I didn't need to look behind at all. I just break nice and gentle and early to get into the corners and just make sure the car was balanced and didn't go anywhere. That was the important thing, was keeping it on the track. And Yeah, no, but he had a little look either side now and again, but no, it was fine, it was, it was good. Charles Clark, uh, another great race there between you and James. You've been tired at the hip all day, haven't you? Yeah, it was very close to the end. I could not see a thing. I was just following his um, brake lights most of the way. So literally just tagging on to the end of him and then um, it was close along the finish at the end, but I'm happy with that. It's really enjoyed it. Well, Paul, we said at the start of the day you were targeting two solid results here. You've ended up with two victories in Class 3. You've got to be happy with that. Yeah, absolutely delighted. It's probably been my best two races together. In the wet, it was sort of um, something I hadn't really got good experience of doing, especially with the wet tyres, but it all came together. I felt really comfortable. So, yeah, I'm actually enjoying the rain for once. <laughs> Just one more event to go in the championship this year. Simon Clark has a 22-point lead before the drop scores over Mark McAleer and Pete Morris. James Cayley is next up. Class 2 is close as well. James Coleman six points clear of Charles Clark. Matt Kyle Henning in third from Bill Cayley and defending champion Ross Morris. In Class 3, Paul Simpson leading from Mike Thompson. Alison Nelson and Sam Beckett shared in third place from Barry Strong and Stephen Shaw. Well, Alton Park has produced plenty of twists and turns in the championship story, as we predicted it would. Mark McAleer successful in race one, but a gearbox problem in race two. That means Simon Clark has the advantage in class one, heading for the Donington Decider. The conditions here may not have been that enjoyable, but the racing certainly has. I'm off to find somewhere warm and dry to curl up for the night, but I hope you've enjoyed the racing here from Alton Park. We'll see you again next time for the final rounds at Donington.